time now for our monthly visit with uh, the Northern Indiana Community Foundation and Brian Johnson joins us now. Good morning, sir. Thanks for having me today. Oh, thanks for coming in. We always love talking about yeah. what's going on with the Community Foundation and uh, and what the Community Foundation is doing as well. Yeah, so. well, we got a few things going on. Yeah, Just a few? Seems like, seems like we always have a few <laughs> things going on. So. Um, just a few things that are coming up in the near future. Um, this group called the Women's Giving Circle. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that before. Um, it is a group of local women who make a membership donation each year and then grant out um, to supporting projects and organizations in our community. Um, the news here is that their grant applications are available now. Ah, there you this go. This is a fun video grant application process. Ooh, a video grant. Video grant. So we've asked organizations to submit a little two to five minute video. Keep it, keep it five minutes or less. <laughs> um, tell us a little story about what your organization is doing and, and what you need those funds for. Um, it's a really fun process. The last couple of years we've always had an organization say, well, we're not sure that we can make a video. And for some folks, that, that may be a daunting request, um, but we've had pretty creative ways. We've had yeah. anywhere from drones flying overhead to an individual carrying around a phone and just showing some of the things about the project. So it can be yeah. as simple as complex. If you need yeah. some help, I always say, hey, find a middle schooler or a grade <laughs> yeah. schooler, and they can probably help you make that. Yeah. But um, we really want one application just to show us what they're doing. So. Yeah. Um, those applications are available now. The deadline to submit those is September 11th. Okay. So still have some time to plan those out. Um, applications range a few hundred to a few thousand as far as grant dollars. Um, and so that is, again, September 11th. So you still have some time to plan out your video. Get that to us. We have a, have a page on our website, nicf.org. If you follow the Fulton County link to the Women's Giving Circle, it has information about the process. Um, Do they have a certain dollar amount they give out or number, a number of grants, or how does that? It varies. Okay. It really varies depending. Some years we've had three grants that we've awarded. Some years we've had five or six. So it really varies on the project. Sometimes it depends if, yeah. if we have if we have four or five organizations asking for five hundred dollars each, we might be able yeah. to grant to all those. If we um, if we have them asking for more, it may be a little bit more okay. than that. But usually, two three thousand okay. dollars is kind of the top gotcha. uh, the top range of those grants. Um, but by all means, if if yeah. you have questions, you're interested in applying for that, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is membership dues. Um, those dues are $120 a year. Half of that goes to these immediate grants, and the other half goes into an endowment fund. And this year, the endowment fund, the last few years, the endowment fund has been helping provide some grant dollars for the projects that have been supported, allowing the group to grant even more. So um, we're north of $80,000 in grants from this organization, all from those $120 a year dues from individual members. So if you're, you're listening and you're interested in being part of this group, um, we also have information on that same page about how you can join or renew your dues anywhere from sending in a check. We can do that online, um, make it simple for four members. So, also, we've created a Facebook group okay. for this group, so the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. So, if you're on Facebook, check that out. You may have seen some posts that show up on the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Facebook page, but check that out and see. We'll have some regular information about what the group has done and, and news about events and things coming up. The other thing to know for members or potential members is mark your calendar September 28th okay. at the Times Theater. Mm -hmm. We'll be having our annual granting event for the organization, okay. so members and those interested, we'd encourage you <coughs> to join us that evening. Um, of September 28th, see the theater. We're gonna since yeah. we're doing video grants, we figured uh, no better way to watch these video grants than on a big screen. Perfect. Yes. So we're looking forward to that. So um, again, those dates: September 11th for the grant <coughs> applications and September 28th for the granting event. All right. Talking about Facebook, 
Yes. You ever hear of these things called scavenger hunts? Ah, something we, that the community foundation is good at. Yeah, we had, had a little fun last year and we've been having some fun this year. Um, so we have a Facebook scavenger hunt. We've been doing this in Stark County and Miami County. Okay. And so August is when Fulton County will be having our scavenger Ooh. hunt. So fun, fun. The way we do it is we post a, a semi cryptic picture <laughs> of a location that we've granted to. And there are ways that you can earn points. So if you like it or if you share it, or the top points are if you go and take a picture of yourself in front of this Ooh. with our community foundation sign. We got some fun awards, but kind of a neat way of highlighting some of the projects that we've granted to either recently or in the past. So I think in the community foundation we've had about 30 years of grants <laughs> to be able to give out. So could be there, anywhere. There may be some places that are less familiar to folks. So uh -huh. keep an eye on our Facebook page if you're not a if you don't follow the Community Foundation, like us, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, you can participate in the scavenger hunt. So fun, fun. We will look forward to that. I know it's only July, but well, school starts. Like the end of July. End of July. <laughs> end of July. The, the temperature tells us it's the end of July yes. out there. So. It tells us school's ready to start because it's getting warmer. Yeah, we're, we're already starting to think about scholarships. Um, thinking in particular the Lilly Endowment Community Scholarship. Um, that is an application that is separate from the rest of our scholarships that, that we run a separate um, process just for that. Um, we appreciate Lilly Endowment um, providing the support for this program to allow students to go to a college of their choice in Indiana. So um, the application will be available in the middle of August so not quite yet, but <laughs> keep your ears open. Um, students, as you're going back to school, guidance counselors will have information about this. Um, take some time to look at this. It, it is a fairly detailed application, requires some uh, pieces of information from other folks, essays, things like that. Um, but this is a program that Lilly Endowment has offered um, that helps students who have completed high school obtain that next step of education. So a really great program. Um, applications, like I said, will be available in the middle of August and we'll have a mid-September deadline for that. So students will have about a month to complete that application and, and any information that we need. So keep, an, keep your eyes open for that. Never hurts to uh, get a little head start on it. It doesn't. And, and <laughs> think about who may be yeah. You could ask to write a letter of recommendation yeah. or character reference or that information that you may want to include in that mm -hmm. application. Think about academics, obviously, as a right. significant part of that, but um, community involvement, volunteer works, work experience, all those things fall into that. So st start thinking about those pieces that you'd like to include in that. So. Another thing that the Community Foundation has been working with is, is a program called Charity Tracker. Um, last month we had some interns with yes. us and unfortunately they weren't able to be with <laughs> us today because they're in Indianapolis at a Lilly Endowment sponsored <laughs> workshop. So, um, But they've been doing an amazing job getting um, Charity Tracker um, organized in our community. We've had it for a while. We're trying to work to expand um, the reach of Charity Tracker. Um, this is a program that helps organizations, nonprofits collaborate with one another. Um, helps them work more efficiently, provide more services to the clients that they serve, um, and also help provide the clients with a better experience. So I walk in the door of one organization, they can help connect me with or even know about services that other organizations offer. So um, it's a great way to, to help both the organization and the individuals that are served in the community. So if you are a nonprofit and you're interested in being part of Charity Tracker, we'd love to hear from you. Um, reach out to us and we can talk to you more in depth about details and, and how that process goes. So, well, today we wanted to talk about a few of the grants that the foundation has given out over the last few months. So that's been a busy few months. Been a busy few months <laughs> and it's it's one of those things. So when we when we talk about these grants, these grants are coming from our community funds. So these are funds that donors have 
donate it to the community foundation and say we don't want to restrict this on how you use this other than for good things for current needs in our community. So the neat thing about this is we talk about 30 years of grants. Those donors that have given 25, 30 years ago because of endowments, those funds are still here in the community, still working for the community, still making grants. And in most cases, a lot of these funds have actually granted out more than the gift they, that was initially given, wow. but they're still here and working for yeah. us. So it's neat to neat to see how that works. So when we talk about some of these grants, um, know that a huge thank you to the donors who have supported these community funds and made these grants possible. We think by the end of this year, we anticipate over a quarter of a million dollars in grants wow. to projects and organizations. So um, it's great to see our community support each other through this way. So. Some of the recent grants that we've given, um, the Kiwana Community Food Pantry. Um, we go in our Wayback Machine and, and think it really wasn't that long ago, but it was 10 years ago, um, 2013, we were able to grant to help this organization move from an upstairs room in a church that was providing that, but not necessarily an ideal situation for the food pantry. Um, the church and some community businesses and community volunteers facilitated a move to a new facility in Kiwana that has, instead of having to carry food upstairs, <laughs> have clients carry food back downstairs, um, in a small room that was cramped, they now have a ground level ADA accessible facility, have an overhead door so I can back up to it with a truck and then load a pallet right into the food pantry. and a great process. So they've been doing an amazing job in in Kiwana um, with that and one of the things that they uh, were in need of was a generator to help mm -hmm. with backup power in the case of a power outage. You think about all of the food, um, I think they have four or five freezers in the food pantry and you think about important. the last time I was over there fortunately they had had some donations um, and the freezers were full. So you think about what happens if power goes out and then you need that <laughs> backup. So, so we were able to provide a grant of $8,500 to the Kiwana Community Food Pantry to help purchase a backup generator. Had the chance to go over there a couple weeks ago and the generator is installed and, and helping make sure that that food is still available even if we have a power outage in the community. So um, great job there. Um, on that food theme, we see occasionally food finders. Mm -hmm. um, of course, they supply a lot of our area food pantries um, with food. Um, a great resource for those organizations, but one thing that they do in the community is a couple times a month, they have a mobile food pantry that they come and help provide. They bring a truck full of food. Um, community foundation, other organizations have volunteered at these. It's not uncommon to serve 100 plus families at one of these events. Um, I have to say a big shout out to Mill Creek Church. They they staff one of these each month at their facility okay. and some other organizations. Um, I know the Kiwana Food Pantry, the Akron United We Stand Food Pantry, um, some different organizations throughout the community help staff this. and. and We'd like to say thank you to Food Finders for providing this this service. We were able to provide a grant of $6,600 to help them bring additional mobile food pantries mm -hmm. to our community. So in a time where we're hearing from a lot of food pantries saying the need that we're seeing is going up because of different programs changing or um, things rolling out of, of service availability, um, food Finders Mobile Food Pantry has been providing a, a pretty significant service in our community. So we're, we're appreciative to, and excited to be able to help them with that. Another neat program, Junior Achievement. Oh, yes. I don't know if you've ever participated in that. <laughs> um, it, it finds a bunch of volunteers throughout the community and has some financial education in the schools, um, some things like BizTown, kind of an exciting program for students mm -hmm. to participate in, um, but this is a program that we have in, in our area schools. Um, we're able to provide $2,500 to be able to help provide some of that programming. So things like how do I balance a checkbook, uh, 
what do groceries cost? I'm sure that's a lot of oh, questions yeah. that, that people have been thinking about, but some of those, some of those financial skills, um, and thank you to Junior Achievement and all the volunteers that help make that program an amazing thing. We're excited to help educate the next generation. So, so I have to give both Randy and Dakota bonus points because they knew that Rochester has a butterfly garden. <laughs> Even knew where it was. Even knew where it was, so that, that may be like extra bonus points for both of you, but um, this is a, a neat project. Um, a few years ago, it um, was started by a couple of local individuals and um, at the Lakeside Park here in Rochester. So if you drive past and you see a white structure out there that looks kind of like a gazebo, um, it's a really neat area with some native plants and um, pollinator attractors. And a few years ago, we were able to help Grant to provide some structure because you think about that area and what do we think of deer? Deer, geese. They, they, <laughs> like, those, they like those plants. Yeah. So, um, they are able to build a structure around that to protect some of that, but still have that outdoor setting. So um, this year we're able to provide $2,000 to help with some needs around that and help improve that. So if you get a chance, if you're out there, maybe going to the beach mm -hmm. or just sitting there enjoying lunch, walk through the butterfly garden. It's a neat area that um, is really an asset to our community. A lot of people have driven past it and not even realized what it was. So <laughs> check it out. Another exciting grant we were able to make, um, we were able to help out the Outlet Youth Center. Always a good one. That's a great organization. They're doing great things, have some awesome summer programming going on. Um, one thing that they're in the middle of is, is raising some operating dollars. It's, um, I know they recently received a donation of a building that's been a great asset, allowed them to do so many more things. A couple months ago, I was there, and there were a group of students playing kickball out in the side yard. Yeah, that couldn't have happened at the old facility. So <laughs> no. it's neat to just have that. You know, sometimes kids mm -hmm. just want to go outside and play in the grass. Right. And so it's neat to have that opportunity. But um, we we're able to provide fifteen thousand dollars in operating support um, for that organization to keep up the great programs. And of course, they're um, looking at adding additional days to their after-school program as school starts up. They've been doing summer program, had a lot of fun doing different activities, um, providing experiences for kids that they may not have a chance to do otherwise. So um, a really amazing organization. I'll put in a plug. If, if you're not interested in donating to the Community Foundation, the Youth Center is still looking to raise some dollars for their operating. Um, they need to make sure that they can Keep going yeah. and they make sure they can serve these students and some really exciting things going on there. But um, one of those huge assets on the community. It's very huge. So, talking about huge assets, talking about grants in the past, Fulton County Animal Center. Mm. You've been out there recently? I haven't been out there in a while, but, okay. I, but it's a great place. I had a chance to stop out there last week and yeah. have some fun. I, I'm, always in danger of coming home with more legs than I left. Well, that's what kind of, yeah, I, I'm afraid if I go out there, yeah. Yeah, especially if I take the <laughs> wife with me. So, um, we're animal lovers. We've had the opportunity to adopt from the Animal Center in the past. We, we hope we'll have the chance to adopt in the future. Just a little plug. Yeah. Their kennels are full, so if you're looking for an animal, they have some very friendly ones out mm -hmm. there. The dog that we met was a little bit unsure when we first met her, and by the time we left, she had jumped up in my lap and was like, don't leave without me. That's right, take me so, home. I'm a great organization, but they they're, um, received a $3,000 grant for a program called Pit Mix Fix. That's hard to say. Yeah. Pit Mix Fix. Okay. okay. I'm glad that was you, not that's, me. That's a tongue twister there. <laughs> I'm a program that helps um, animal shelters, a lot of the animals that, that come in. Um, on the canine side are some mix of pit bull, um, which if you haven't been around them, they're pretty amazing dogs. They get a bad rap, but yeah. they really, this, the, the dog I was talking about was a, was a pit mix, yeah. and she was nothing but friendly once she realized I was there to pay attention to her. So <laughs> just wanted somebody to pay attention to her. So, um, but this program will help the animal shelter. They've been working with different programs with, with both cats and the dogs to help um, spay and neuter 
animals um, help address that overpopulation issue and so um, they've been doing an amazing job with this and this program will help um, I know they have some other opportunities from um, organizations outside Fulton County to help with this program as well so these monies will be used to um, help provide loving homes for these animals and again a little plug stop out there yeah. see the animals they have they've got yeah. plenty of kittens they've got plenty of dogs that would love nothing more than to go home with them yeah. they even have some uh Barn cats. They barn do have some barn cats. Are, mm -hmm. and, some homes, so. and, and one thing that I that I appreciate that they do is they they really work not only to adopt animals but to learn about the animals and match them up with owners that um, are a good fit. Because if you if you get an animal that may not be a great fit, sometimes that can create problems. Yeah. But if you can find that right animal, it's it's a pretty amazing opportunity. So, dog and cat lovers unite. There you go. Storm the animal shelter, <laughs> take home. Empty it out. Yeah, so we, we want to help get some get some animals adopted. So thanks to the Animal Center for the amazing job that they do. So, so th that's just a little snapshot of some of the grants that we've helped recently. Um, again, when we start talking about over a quarter of a million dollars in grants to some really crucial organizations, you think about what would happen if our food pantries left. Mm. What would happen if our animal shelter left? What would happen if we didn't have a youth center? Junior achievement, or you think about some of those things that make our communities nice. What would happen if we didn't have parks in our community? Those are all great things that um, we appreciate so much the organizations stepping up and being, being willing to say, hey, we can help address this. We can help make Fulton County a better way um, for people to live and it's, it's just a wonderful community to see that. So, just thinking about some of the things that we talked about, a reminder about Women's Giving Circle, those grant applications are available due September 11th. The granting event for members will be September 28th. Keep an eye out on Facebook for the scavenger hunt. Follow us around, see, Coming up and on. see how much you know about Fulton County. Uh, yes. There may be some slightly well-known and mm -hmm. some slightly obscure locations. <laughs> Check Not that so out. Um, Lily Endowment, high school seniors, keep an eye out for that application. And appreciate all that our donors do because without our donors, none of what we just talked about this morning right. would be possible. So really amazing when we, when we see the generosity of our community, um, how amazing that is. So if you have questions, interested in anything we talked about today, or just have an idea for the community, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can find us online, nicf.org. Like us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, or if you're a Women's Giving Circle member, follow the Women's Giving Circle page. Um, you can give us a call, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office at 227 East Knight Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any questions or ideas you have for our community. Well, Brian, we appreciate you coming in. Uh, we'll look forward to talking to you again next month. Thanks for having us. Thank you. That's Community Foundation Brian Johnson here on their monthly visits.